grace and peace to you from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. A warm welcome to St. Mary's on this Easter Sunday morning. I hope that you will have a great celebration throughout today. Uh, a welcome too to those who are joining us online from across the province and indeed beyond the province. I hope that we may all feel united in this celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So let us offer our worship to God as we pray for the presence of God's Holy Spirit amongst us. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the old order of sin and death and have made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. To those assembled in the house of Cornelius, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that God, John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and God as witness, and all who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and believed. For as yet they didn't understand the scripture that he must die, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced the, to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Give thanks to the Lord for this, his glorious gospel. Praise, Praise to Christ our Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, source of all being, eternal word, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Where are you? Where are you? You may remember that this was a question God asked of Adam and Eve. They, of course, were hiding because they had discovered shame, discovered that they were 
naked. This event is part of the story recounted in Genesis by which our ancient ancestors sought to explain how in a world that otherwise was so very good, it was nevertheless not as it should be. To explain why there was suffering, why life was often a struggle. And their answer was not to blame God, who they believed devoutly to be benevolent and just, but to explain that the earliest human couple had done the one thing they'd been told not to do. Namely, to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They had been warned there would be consequences, and there were. So now, as God strolls through the beautiful garden, created as a special place where his creatures could feel utterly at home. As he strolls through the garden, and as a beautiful phrase in Genesis, at the time of the evening breeze, expecting to chat with his friends in easy familiarity, they are nowhere to be found. Where are you? God asks. We can't read the story of Mary Magdalene's encounter with the risen Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane without having in mind that earlier encounter in the Garden of Eden. The story in Genesis takes place in the evening. The heat of the day now passed as the sun goes down. Whereas in Gethsemane, it was, as we just heard, early in the morning, it was still dark, the sun hadn't risen on a new day. Dusk in Eden gives way to dawn in Gethsemane. And this time it's not God wandering in perplexity, searching for his friends who are both hidden and lost, but Mary Magdalene searching for her friend, who she supposes is lost, but is in fact standing before her, although it seems she doesn't recognize him. She has a where question, just like God. God says to Adam and Eve, where are you? Mary says, tell me where you have laid him. And she asks this question to the man she thinks is the gardener. In the first story, Adam and Eve lose touch with God. A bond is broken. In the second story, another man and another woman reestablish the bond. Open the possibility that we need hide in fear and shame no longer. The stone has been rolled away. There is no body in the place of death. And as Mary turns away from the tomb towards the light, Jesus calls her by name. Forgive me for laboring the point this morning. Easter sermons really ought to be full of humor. They ought to be light touch, full of feasting and chocolate and hallelujahs. Thankfully, our liturgy will make up for some of these shortcomings, as I hope will the Easter egg hunt for those of a certain age. For after all, Christ is risen, and Christ is risen regardless of the particular set of circumstances that beset us from year to year. Indeed, the darker our world, the more eagerly we should celebrate the light the dawning of a new day, the reassurance that unlike Adam and Eve, God does not play hide and seek, but is there in plain sight if we could only see. 
that God speaks to us, calls us by name, if we could but hear. Yet this Easter of all Easter's, the Easter of 2024, it feels important to reflect on how the message of resurrection speaks into our reality. Not merely as a promise for the next life, nor yet as a way of short-circuiting the challenges of this life, a sort of with one bound he was free solution to an otherwise impenetrable plot. But as a mysterious truth that meets us in the garden of each new day. Two things stand out for me. The first is that though God may not play hide and seek, sometimes it feels as if God does. Even Jesus' closest friends don't recognize him in those days after the first Easter. And if they have difficulty, having accompanied him for three years, no wonder we struggle to identify signs of resurrection. Perhaps we have the wrong expectations, like them. Perhaps we are simply looking in the wrong direction. Perhaps we're distracted by other things. Yet if you think about it, how could this not be so? For resurrection is something new, something unencountered and confounding. It's not mere resuscitation of a dead body, nor is it a restoration of what once was. It comes as the dawning of a new day we have yet to live. So often when reflecting on the life of the church, the life of our nation, the affairs of the world, we long somehow for the clocks to be wound back, to put things back to the way they once were. If only people still went to church as they did in the 1950s. If only the British Empire still brought peace and order to the world. Even voicing such sentiments reveals how ludicrous they are. We wouldn't actually want to go back. There is no winding back of the clock, no restoration available to us. As the history of the state of Israel demonstrates so painfully at the moment, there is no neutral point to which time can be rewound, no moment which was not clouded by human sin and hubris and prejudice and foolishness. We live, all of us, tightly bound in the web of human fallibility. What we do have, though, is a promise of resurrection. A new day into which we stumble, dazzled by the light, in which we encounter a risen Lord, more often than not unrecognizable to us, whose presence we too often only recognize in retrospect. And this can be scary. Which brings me to the second point about the resurrection. And it is that a theme of the resurrection appearances is that either Jesus or the angels speak words of encouragement. Peace be with you. Do not be alarmed. And I hear these words not as a simple greeting, but as words to reassure a frightened world. For our world is a frightening place at the moment. We fear war. We fear ecological catastrophe, social collapse. Some of this fear is well-founded, some of it hysterical, fed by unscrupulous people speaking out of their vested interests in defense of their own privilege, their power, their particular conspiracy theory. 
But we know well that making decisions out of fear rarely leads us to wisdom. Making decisions because I need to be right, or I need to win, or I need to defend my territory may help me, but it invariably harms others. Which is why I believe that our faith in the resurrection, even though at times we may meet Christ as a stranger, offers our world hope, invites us to the possibility that we need not fear ultimately, and that it really is worth seeking harmony, to commit ourselves to building a world in which we can say to one another, peace be with you, and mean it. That such a world can be a happier, holier, more godly place. That this costly journey is a journey into a new day. The resurrection offers us the extraordinary possibility that the God who walked in the garden at the time of the evening breeze does so still. That we who have lost touch with God discover that God hasn't lost touch with us. Mary Magdalene is told in the story not to hold on to Jesus, not because somehow she isn't worthy to touch him, but so that by letting him go, by ascending to God, who is his father and our father, Jesus ensures that God will never, ever lose his hold on us. Amen. Now, I'm inviting you now to, make, to renew your baptismal vows. Uh, and just a little health warning that there will be a point during this where I shall be splashing water all over the congregation. So if you don't want to be splashed with water, you might have to put your umbrella up. I invite you, if you're able, please, to stand. The Christian life means turning from evil and turning to Christ. On the cross, Christ confronted the power of evil and raised from the dead, declared the victory of God's love. Standing now with Christ, do you renounce all evil? Seeking now to follow him, do you turn to Christ? Following the way of Christ, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body 
and the life everlasting. Amen. In Christ, God has given us a new nature so that day by day we might be renewed in the image of our maker. As disciples of Christ, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you proclaim the good news by word and deed, serving Christ in all people? Will you work for justice and peace, honoring God in all creation? Eternal giver of life and light, this holy morn shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given to us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth and shine as a light in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us pray. To the words, roll back the stone. Please respond and come to us, risen Christ. Roll back the stone and come to us, risen Christ. O God of new and unexpected life. Even when you stand before us, give us faith to recognize your strangeness that we need not cling to familiar griefs. Roll back the stone and come to us, risen Christ. O God of new and unexpected life, we bring into your presence our heartfelt longing for your world in all its need for our waste and misuse of our earth, our common and future home. Help us recognize the new life you offer, not in the using up of finite resources, but in the constant regeneration and potential of the life Roll back the stone and come to us, risen Christ. O God of new and unexpected life, we pray for all who suffer and are in need. We pray for the people of Gaza, of Ukraine, of Sudan, for those known to us whose needs we carry. May suffering be transformed in the power of your forgiving presence. Thought to be our victim and who is yet our unexpected savior. Roll back the stone and come to us, risen Christ. O oh God of new and unexpected life, we pray for the church throughout the world as together we celebrate your renewing presence among us in the midst of our tired habits of hearts and minds. Come to us with your gift of new life. from all those fears and anxieties that imprison us. Roll back the stone and come to us, 
risen Christ. O oh God, we remember and give thanks for all those living and departed who have shown us something of your new life and hope. Join us with them in praise of you. Roll back the stone. God, our creator, in the stillness of this place, in the company of in the power of the Spirit of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, Amen. I invite you, please, to stand. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace.
blessed are you, Lord. earth has given and human hands have made it will become for us the bread of life creation through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become the cup of our salvation the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god To you, author of all being, your power sustains, your love restores our broken world. You are unceasingly at work, from chaos bringing order and filling emptiness with life. Christ, raised from the dead, proclaims a dawn of hope. He lives in us that we may walk in light. Your spirit is fire in us. Your breath is power to purge us. of your redeeming purpose freed by him who burst from the tomb and opened the gate of life we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory
praise and thanksgiving be to you, Lord of all. For by the cross, eternal life is ours, and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden, the mystery shone clear that he who is forever, making himself known in the breaking of the bread, speaking peace to the fearful disciples, welcoming weary fishermen on the shore, he renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the Spirit, who sets a seal of freedom on your sons and daughters. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which slaves walked free, at supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. And saying, take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread, and this wine, that, overshadowed by your Spirit's life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized in glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last, in your new creation, we enter into our heritage, in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. As our Savior has taught us, be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Give thanks to our gracious God, whose mercy endures forever. Father, we have broken the bread, which is Christ's body. We have tasted the wine of his new life. We thank you for these gifts, by which we are made one in him, and drawn into that new creation, which is your will for all. Through him who died for us and rose again, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just uh, a couple of notices to say that tea and coffee will be served after the service. Please do join us there if you're able, if you're not rushing off for your Easter lunches, um, uh, just at my, uh, the, the back of the cathedral there. Um, I think we should say uh, a huge thanks to our choir uh, for all their efforts this past week and, uh, and this morning. Um, and in particular, um, many of you may not know that uh, our director of music is on sabbatical at the moment. His sabbatical finishes today, um, but uh, our assistant uh, director of music, uh, Miss Morgan, has been uh, taking charge of the choir throughout Lent, Holy Week and Easter. So uh, our huge thanks to you and also to Mr. Carsley, who's been um, stepping in on the organ, but to the whole choir. I think they deserve a round of applause. Um, there was mention of chocolate in the, uh, in the bishop's uh, very fine sermon. Um, and indeed, uh, those of you, some of you may have already spotted, there is, there is some chocolate around the cathedral. Um, and uh, those who are young, or even the young at heart, and choristers, I should tell you that this includes you. The joy of the resurrection is yours today, in that you're being given the final hymn off in a, in a reasonably orderly manner. If you want to spend, uh, those who are young at heart, want to spend uh, the final hymn, finding chocolate around the cathedral, then the challenge is on. I'll give you a clue. I spotted one. <laughs> the bishop managed to do very well to not dislodge it. So that one's yours. So we'll stand to sing our final hymn.
the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.